what is this dynamic polymorphism? Uh, we have seen what is static polymorphism. I have given you one example, right? So what is static polymorphism? We talked about method overloading. Method overloading is a method taking in different forms inside the class. It depends on the number of arguments and the type of arguments it takes. So the type of method call, uh, the type of method that should be invoked is decided upon compilation. So that is called static polymorphism. But what is this dynamic polymorphism? We'll take a look at the definition for dynamic polymorphism. A process in which a call to a overridden method resolves during runtime. So it's all about a overridden method. So we know what is overriding, right? Say if I have class A and then I have class B. So I have this display method here and then again a display method here. Now class B extends class A. So we are talking about inheritance. Whenever we are talking about overriding, it involves inheritance. So here class B extends class A. What is overriding? Giving a separate definition for display method inside your subclass or redefining your method in the superclass inside your subclass. That is overriding. That is when you talk about dynamic polymorphism, this is a process in which a call to overridden method resolves during runtime. So I should be calling a overridden method. What is the overridden method here? Display method. So when I'm calling this display method, which version of that overridden method should be called will be resolved at runtime. I know this is difficult to understand with this theory. Let's uh, understand one important concept that is upcasting in Java to understand dynamic polymorphism. So when you talk about dynamic polymorphism, this concept of casting is used. I'll tell you what is upcasting using a code example here. So it's very simple. I have a class super class here. This is the super class. It has a display method. What is there inside the display method? Allow from super class. And you all you also have a super class method here. That is I am only super class method. What is the super class method? It is present only in the super class. It's not overridden in the subclass. Next, we have a class subclass extends super class. So we have super class. And what is that we are performing here? We are extending the super class using a subclass. And this display method in the super class is overridden. So we are overriding it here. What do you mean by overriding? I'm just giving another definition, allow from subclass. So display method is overridden. And we have only subclass method. So this is a method that is only part of the subclass. So it is called I am only subclass method. So this is the inheritance hierarchy. Nothing much, superclass, subclass. One method in the superclass is overridden. One method in the superclass and one method in the subclass. That's it. So now what we are doing here is we are, we are using the reference of the superclass. Say superclass S is equal to new subclass. So we are typecasting. Say there is an object of type subclass which is being typecasted using a reference of superclass. Say you can very well perform this. That is if you have a parent class parent P is equal to if you have a child subclass you can say new child. So it's like you can use the reference of the parent and you can create a child object. So you're typecasting the child to a parent. So this is called upcasting. So that's what I have used here. This is called upcasting. So when you upcast something like this, you're going to use the parent reference for a child object. How it works? How it works in the sense using this parent reference, I can invoke all the methods inside the superclass. Okay, what are the methods? Superclass dot method. If I do p dot superclass dot method, this is a method only in the superclass. So I'll be able to access that. If I perform p dot display, when I perform p dot display, display is overridden in the subclass. So when I invoke display, what will happen is it will automatically invoke. It will automatically invoke only the overridden method. Oops. A simple concept. Say if I use the parent reference, I can access all the methods in the parent class, which is not overridden. If I call a method that is overridden, automatically only the overridden method will be 
invoked. So this is the way upcasting works. And uh, I hope you are clear with this. Maybe we'll code this and try. What I have done here, I think uh, you'll be able to see this now. So I have class super class. And inside this, I have a public method. What is this method called display? And uh, I'll say this, this is display from super class. This is display from super class. That's it. So I'm going to override this method in my subclass. And there is one more method which I'm not going to override. Public void say I'll just call this what what is that method we add there? We'll follow the same thing. Super class method. So let me have this as super class only method. And uh, what we'll do is we'll just have a sysout statement saying this is super class only. Okay. Next, we have a class subclass extends superclass. Now, what we are going to do is we are going to override this method inside a subclass. Let me override that, copy paste, and then let's say this is display from subclass. So we are overriding this method. And we'll also have only a subclass method here that is public void subclass method. So this method is specific only for the subclass. So we'll have this method and say this out. This is a subclass only method. Okay. So that's it. Now what we are doing here is we'll try upcasting. What is upcasting in Java? Upcast. So what is upcasting? We use the superclass reference. Say superclass S is equal to new subclass. So this is a reference of type superclass. Now what all we can do with this reference is we can access all the methods in the superclass which is not overridden. So I can call s dot. What is that superclass method? If I invoke this overridden method, say if I do s dot display, if I just perform this s dot display, what is happening here is actually it is a parent class reference. You think it should be invoking this, but it will be invoking the overridden method. So you call s dot display. Where is this display? Display is there in the parent class. Display is there in the child class. There are two forms of this method, but which one is being invoked? The method in the child class. So this decision happens during runtime. So they call this dynamic polymorphism. So which one to call? This binding happens during runtime. Say s dot display. Which one to call? It will automatically call the overridden method. So this binding. I mean, sorry. So this binding here. Yeah, this happens during runtime. JVM makes this decision on which uh, version to call. So that will be calling what the overridden method. Say if I'm not overriding this method. And if I'm having s dot display, what will happen? Which one will be called? The method in the parent class will be called. So this decision is entirely happening, you know, during runtime. So we are going to call this as runtime polymorphism or dynamic polymorphism. So there will be a lot of questions in your mind. Why should we even have this? What is the use of this? I can very well create an object for subclass directly without using the parent reference and achieve my objective, right? That will be the question. So I had I to add the same question in my mind. Are you all clear with upcasting and the role of upcasting in Java? Now, let us take this exercise. Uh, what is this exercise? You have a class shape. And in this class shape, you have a display shape method. So what this does is this is a shape that is going to be displayed. So this is the code for class shape. And we have class choir extending or inheriting class shape. So this extends this. So what is this uh, class choir? Class choir extends shape. And what we are doing is we are overriding this method inside our choir. So this is choir. Just overriding by extending the shape. Next we have class rectangle. Rectangle extends shape. Again you override display shape using this is a rectangle. 
Likewise, you go with glass circle, you extend the shape, override this method saying this is a circle. You have class hexagon, the same thing, you override this is a shape by saying this is an hexagon. You understood the code and the hierarchy, right? Inner returns hierarchy here. Now the problem that we have is, you should create an array of shape objects like this. So your array should contain square, circle, rectangle, hexagon. So this is an object reference for hexagon. This is an object reference for rectangle, object reference for circle, object reference for square. You can also have again circle, circle, hexagon, hexagon, anything like that. But then what you have to do is you have to create an array of objects that inherit a common parent. That is possible. Say the same kind of concept, you'll also be ending up with collection frameworks. What is a collection framework? You will create a list of objects. Say it can be a linked list of objects, an array list of objects, wherein that those objects can be anything like this. That is possible. So can you write code for managing an array of objects like this? All these objects inherit which uh, class? Shape class. So now you have to call all these array of objects and then you should invoke the uh, display shape method for all of them. Display shape method for all these objects. So you have to invoke display shape for square, display shape for circle, display shape for rectangle, display shape for hexagon. So let me go with the code here. Let me keep this. So now let's take an exercise on dynamic polymorphism. Let me delete all these things. So what is our idea here? We have a class shape. And here we have a very simple method, public method. What is that? Display shape. And uh, here we'll have a sysout statement saying, this is from shape class. Okay. Now we have a set of classes inheriting shape. We'll call this class square. Extends shape and I'm going to override this method here. So let me just copy this and uh, paste it here. And uh, what is this? This is square. Oh God. Likewise, class circle extends shape. Again, let me overwrite this. So what is this? This is circle. Class, we add uh, rectangle, extends shape. Let me overwrite this. So this is rectangle. Finally, we love class, hexagon extends shape we'll override this we'll say this is hexagon so our inheritance uh, is done what next we should be are you clear with the inheritance what next we should create an array of objects now now let us create an array of objects So this array is going to contain objects of type shape. So let me say this is shape. S is equal to new shape. It's an array. So I'll say it's going to hold four objects. Now we have created the array on the heap. Now every reference should be referring to an object of that particular type. Say for instance, S of zero, I just want it to be new square. So the index zero is a reference to the object of type square. And here we call this upcasting because we are using the parent class reference for a child class object. Likewise, S of one, we'll say it is going to point to new rectangle. Let's have this. S of two is going to point to new circle. And S of three 
is going to point to new hexagon. Now, what I can do is I can run a for loop for int i is equal to 0, i less than s dot length. For the entire shape array, I'm going to run this i plus plus, and then I'm going to call s of i dot display shape. So s of 0 dot display shape will be calling the overridden method in the square class. S of 1 dot display shape will call the overridden method in the rectangle class. Likewise, circle S of 2, S of 3 will be hexagon. So now let's run this. Let's check whether we are getting the output. So this is an example for dynamic polymorphism. In the last class, what we were looking at is, say, you may have a method very specific to your child class like this. Say, for instance, square, we can have anything very specific for child class. Public uh, void square only method. This out. We can say this is square only. You can't use the parent reference to access the subclass only method. Say if I perform something like this, s of 0 dot, I will not be able to see that square only method. So in upcasting, you will be only able to access the overridden methods in your child class, but not the subclass only methods. You can't access that method, those methods which are not overridden. Did you all understand the concept of dynamic polymorphism? 